What's up? The hashtag remains in bounds and nations. Thank you so much for keeping it here. And like I promised you before we went on a break, I told you we have various guests in studio. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you actually to our first guest. And guess what? She is super talented she is like I, I i i literally can't put her in like one sentence but i'm gonna tell you she is a an international percussionist she's a drummer and of course she's best right here in nairobi i really don't know how to introduce you ladies and gentlemen let's welcome kasiva mutua how are you it's good to have you on the show. You so and you look great. You look, um, I don't know, you look African. And I love the, the okay. <laughs> The I don't drumsticks. know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The drumstick, but the, that's very. It's at. It's artsy. That's all I can say. Yeah. But without actually going into the interview, I'm gonna let you just do your thing, sure. so that people can know what you're all about before we actually get to talk to you. Oh, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do it. All right. for you to stop because now I'm just, I was just getting into the vibe I'm like okay let's do this let's, let's. <laughs> <laughs> that is really amazing I mean like how do you wake up one day and do you realize you can drum like that like how did that even happen so I started playing drums mm -hmm. from stories that my grandmother used to tell me yeah and um, you know from the stories that she used to tell me I learned how to listen very keenly to sounds around the environment she used to be like you know she was a really really good storyteller and she yeah. tell me all these stories and then I was a very, very curious child. And so um, I kept on bugging her to tell me more and more. And she learned how to keep me away because <laughs> Lilikwana, I'm so She's bored. tired. She's yeah, like, she was bro, tired, you know? like, calm down. So <laughs> she would tell me, hey, I will go to that corner and try and listen to what's going on there. And I would go there and try and listen and listen. And nothing would be happening. They'd be like, so, so what's you know? <laughs> and I'd go back and on and on and on. And the, the more I went back, the more I tried to listen even keenly, more deeper. And I started hearing sounds from the environment as I tried to listen to this secret that was not happening. <laughs> so I would hear like, you know, the wind howling in the trees. I would hear crickets. I would hear people laughing. And, you know, in the center of where all these sounds are happening, I started hearing rhythm. Yeah. And then I tried to replicate those sounds that I was hearing on my, you know, my, my thighs, my legs, my chest. You, you try to make uh, yeah, a sound because, with it. Yeah. And I was really, really tiny. I didn't have any drums. I didn't even know what drums were. I was yeah. about, you know, six years old by right. then. That's a long so time ago. It was a it was really yeah, long time ago. Young, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, as I tried replicating these sounds, um, I grew up, you know, to be replicating sounds on tables, chairs, sufureas, glasses. And yeah. now I replicate these sounds on I the know, drum. But I want to know, because like most of us will just be there and we'll never hear anything. So how, did you, how do you get to a point where you block everything else so that you're just one with the environment? After how long did that come about? Because I know it's okay, now you'll pick up on things I can't hear. Totally, yeah. Because you've mastered that. So Absolutely. after how long did you get there? You know, like in this studio, it's really, really quiet. But if you listen keenly, there's the sound of, I think, an AC happening mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah, sure. If you just like, and there's also like the static of electricity 
electricity you can hear it from like the bulbs and everything wow so i can hear that and it it, it truly doesn't it's it's not um something that has a lot of work mm -hmm. you just need to be very centered and very earthed to what you are and what you're listening to at that point so you you i would say you really have to concentrate right on what's going on and you'll be able to hear these sounds moja moja and sort of like try to sieve them out <laughs> i know, so i think in another one if you are not a percussionist in drama i think you will be you know those people that make our sounds that like the birds chirping yeah and then they use like they sell Ab them to absolutely movie people and stuff. absolutely i think you would <laughs> you would i would great. totally do that i yeah. mean i love sounds i love textures <laughs> yeah and i find colors in textures and sounds right but then it's not always been that because i know like when you are like really young and you're trying to get this when you knew that was your niche and that's what you wanted to do it wasn't easy for you because back then growing up women weren't allowed to drum yeah yeah, so Absolutely. talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I deem something called representation and examples mm. to be a very important thing. Right. When you're a child and you see somebody on TV uh, rocking a stage and playing a guitar, you always have an example to look at and you say, oh, I want to be that. Like that person. But when you don't have that, then it becomes very difficult because then you start thinking, okay, what's wrong with this thing that I want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Like for me, I never saw an example on TV. I never saw an example around me in the community, you know, where I lived. I never saw a woman playing drums. And, you know, I was really worried to the point that, you know, I started thinking, ah, am, I, am I doing something wrong, you know? And because of this, I actually hid this thing, this talent, this skill that I had. From my parents, I never let anybody know mm -hmm. that, ah, I loved playing on, you know, on, I liked tapping on instruments or like, you know, objects, tables, mm -hmm. chairs, whatnot. And um, it's only until maybe when I finished Campo. Oh, yeah, it's very when, late in life. Very late in life is when, you know, I started taking this seriously because mm -hmm. I thought, um, I, I really looked deep within and thought there must be there must be a reason why I like doing what I like doing. Mm -hmm. But there also must be a reason why there are not so many women who are doing what I like doing, mm -hmm. you know? And so I set out to research on, you know, women and drumming and women in music. And I found out that, you know, in some of the cultures, some of them in Africa, actually deem drumming as taboo for women, Yeah, you know? And not just drumming, there's certain instruments, like, for example, in Kenya, you don't see a lot of women playing the orutu, yeah. The nyatiti from, the, the from Western, yeah, 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 the traditional fiddle yes, from Western yeah. Kenya. You don't see a lot of women playing that, yeah. and there's a lot of reasons traditionally and culturally why women don't do that. Yeah. So you know, just learning a bit about culture and how drums, you know, relate to our culture mm -hmm. and tradition, that I was able to sort of put my niche together mm -hmm. and actually even start teaching women yeah. to pick up the dru the, the, the drum as, as, as a tool of expression. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. That that is that where is mantra mantra, mantra music. Yeah, yeah is that yeah. where it was born like? that you know yeah. actually mantra music was born from a need of mm. um i was actually lonely <laughs> because i was lonely because um there weren't any other women playing yeah. i couldn't see anybody else and you know like sometimes when you play for a long time or when you play you know like down in the coast you get blisters Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really difficult to go to guys and tell them, yo, manzeni kora blisters, you know. <laughs> and like, oh, na jibe baje, Sophie, you know. And I actually missed talking to a woman and telling a woman that, yo, I have blisters. Like, there is a way that we talk and understand each other mm -hmm. and sort of just the way we handle each other as yeah. women. And it was born from that need of being able to socialize with other women and express myself in a manner that someone else would understand. Right. So my, um, two of my friends, Mathematics and Mobutu, came mm -hmm. together and we started Motra. So Motra is a space for women to come in and learn percussion, to come in and learn drumming. Um, it's a one year sort of like program where they come in oh. and learn. And then do, do after they, one they year, pay, they pay, they, they sign up? No, they, they just have to sign up. So yeah. if anybody is interested in actually joining Motra, yeah. just find us on Instagram at Motra Music. Yeah. You can DM us if you want to learn how to drum. Yeah. There's no fee. It's yeah. it's a thing that we do from our hearts because it's our way of giving back. That's amazing. Imagine training someone to do something you're passionate about for a whole year without <laughs> even charging them anything. 
Okay. <laughs> That's really just a uh, passion, really. It really and, is and, about passion. And, and um, I saw that you tell your stories through drumming. Yeah. Like drumming helps you tell your story. How so? Maybe you could just explain to us a little bit. So, that um, you know, I haven't been... I haven't been much of a speaker yeah. and I've only become a speaker maybe say the last year mm. and this year yeah. because of you know the release of my debut EP in yeah, yeah. and um, I use the drum to express myself to express mm. what's deep in me and I believe when you're telling a story then you have to be very honest mm. with telling the story and for me honesty lives in my heart deep in my soul yeah. and that's where rhythm comes from Right. So then when I say I tell my stories using the drum as my mm. tool of expression, and then it, I think it's self-explanatory to just say that this is the messenger of what I want to say. And I don't think guys at home actually understand what we're talking about when we say that. Because I've seen you play and you're literally someone else. Because you, you, you're, it's like you have a, a, this person now, like there's someone different that comes through Absolutely. and then they just like, because you take over, they literally take over and it's like you block out everything else and everyone else. I and do. I saw that in uh, Haku, Hakukoye? Hakukoye. Hakukoye, yeah, Hakukoye. Yeah, yeah. I saw that and I saw you and you just like going and going and going and <laughs> <laughs> and that was really awesome to see you, you being in I that mean, space i have to immerse myself in my truth again you know yeah. um when when i play the drum mm -hmm. it's the one place that i'm completely honest with myself yeah it's the one place that i i i truly exist as kasiva yeah and if you're keen mm -hmm. then and if you listen you're able to tell what i'm trying to say yeah. And if you watch me play, then you're truly inspired and get to know what I'm trying to, to, to pass across. Right. And yeah. Hakukole is Hawaiian? So Hakukole. Yeah, because I'm very curious. Yeah, I, I saw it back yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> let me tell you, you the story You're in Hawaii? Of Hakukole. Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Hakukole is a form of art mm -hmm. in Hawaii right. that's actually quite overlooked. And it's um, stories, songs, and poetry right. aimed at ridiculing people. How oh. dope is that? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. in Hawaii, it's used in ridiculing people for a positive purpose. I'll explain. Mm -hmm. So say, for example, you have um, a friend who likes cheating on their boyfriend. Yeah. And it's not cool. Yeah, it's not. And you don't know how to tell them that. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Character development is not it's, character development, yeah. you know. Okay. Yeah. And you can't, you don't know how to approach them and tell them this. Mm -hmm. So in Hawaii, you hire somebody to compose oh. a hakukole for, the, for this person. So the, the person hired to compose the hakukole is sort of like, quote unquote, like a verbal assassin. And you know, they come in with all the poetry, the words, um, the, the ridiculing words, the ridiculing sayings to pass across a message, tell them, yo, like cheating is not cool. I'm but very sure that would be very misused <laughs> right here. <laughs> Because that would happen here. Where? Those people will be busy. They'll be booked all year. I know. Like... <laughs> they will be booked all year. Yeah. So when I composed Hakukole, yeah. um, I remember this one time because, mm -hmm. you know, um, in this EP, I'm actually telling stories of my experiences and the experiences of other people. So stories that have been told by other people. Yeah. And this one time I was in Addis and I was seated in uh, a cultural center and this guy comes and starts singing for me and playing like this one stringed sort of instrument called the masenko. Mm -hmm. And so he's standing there playing the masenko, singing, and guys are dying behind me. They're just laughing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what you you And they you know? You and have then, to go check it out. Yeah, and then, so I'm like, yo, guys, like, Nichanweni, what's going on? <laughs> and then Kumbe, this guy, has been going on and on saying, oh, you're such a beautiful woman. Oh, oh but I can't see a ring on your finger. Oh, oh man, I'd love to marry you and retain you back in Ethiopia. And you have no idea. I had no idea. And then he's like, um, I can see that you're a foreign, you're a foreigner, and I can see that you're not understanding what I'm saying or how I would love to make babies yeah. with a foreign lady, <laughs> you know. And I thought, what's up with this guy? What's up with this guy, you know? And you know, when I was thinking about this experience, I remembered, ah, this ties in with Hakukole because I had yeah. just researched, yeah. you know, this this form of art because I do a lot of uh, music research and just trying to learn like what people are up to, you know, outside Kenya. Mm. And I came across Hakukole. So I was like, wow, this guy and Hakukole have a similarity in terms yeah. of, you know, in, like infusing humor and using, you know, satire yeah. to sort of address people. And, you know, Hakukole is also done in a public forum. So yeah. imagine your friend being Noroshwad in a public forum. <laughs> and people know, like, and people you know, know. 
they yeah. will change. They yeah. will change for because sure. Because they know, sure. like you can read into the satire yeah. And, yeah. and sort of like the hidden sayings and know, ah, we are Nanyorosha because they are cheats. It's like Mtsongono but sang. Word, <laughs> word, 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 yeah. It's like Mtsongono but now it's yeah, sang, yeah. it's it's sayings, it's yeah. poetry. Yeah, yeah. So if only Mtsongono was like aimed at educating somebody, then yeah. it would a complete yeah. yeah. All right. Now I want to talk about Ngewa, but before we do that, I think the camera is going to zoom into this one so that guys can see, but before we get to that, uh, I, I, want, I want to talk about, um, you featured on uh, OK 100 yeah, Women okay. and you also featured on uh, TED. That is so crazy. That is such a big <laughs> achievement. Thank How you. do you even prep for a TED talk? Like, can you yes. imagine that when you don't get TED, you're like, excuse me. Like, <laughs> how was that experience for you, and uh, how did you prep for it, and how did that come about? So TED is one of the, it's one of the things that I actually don't talk about much. Yeah, yeah. Because it's quite humbling that, yeah. you know, a musician, a percussionist from Kenya, yeah. you know, just Kasiva mm. was a TED, you know. Yeah. And um, writing my TED talk sort of took me, um, it took me a long while, but it also took me through a very deep process yeah. of just reliving my life all over again in my head mm -hmm. and just thinking about, you know, those times that I started drumming, how I started drumming, those um, painful times when, you know, um, maybe people would laugh at me or yeah. maybe people would, you know, tear my drums or, you know, when I'd be told to sit, okay, you know, like a lady because, yeah. you know, I would like put a drum, you know, like here, yeah. you know, and it, it, it was, it was, it was quite an experience coming up with that TED talk. Yeah. But executing it was, I think, the hardest part for me because I don't prefer talking. I, I prefer know. playing. So you have the whole idea in your mind, but exactly. then how you let people know. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. I think you did a great job. I checked it out and that was super amazing. Thank you so much. And yeah. being able to express yourself and in that <laughs> place for other people to, you know, to know your story and where you've come from. Yeah. I think that was like really... Yeah, it was it was scary, but we did it. It's vulnerable. Also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's 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 a good TED talk. I mean, it's a yeah. one point two million views now, so that's, that's really dope. Yeah, 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 that's a lot of, views, a lot of views. Yeah, and all these people just get to hear your story, and I'm sure you inspire a lot of people. A lot of people will watch that and be very inspired because if you're studying something that is not out there, so you know people are afraid of what they don't know. That's so they'll true. heckle you. They'll come at you. They're like, "What is this you're doing? Absolutely. Be like, be normal. Be Absolutely. like everyone else." Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure people were very inspired with that. Yeah. And Ngewa, this is your EP. Yes. Six tracks. Six tracks. Yeah, talk to us about that. Uh, Ngewa, um, I'm sure it means stories. It, it means Kama. stories. Actually, it, it's pronounced as Ngewa. 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 Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Ngewa means stories in Kikamba. Mm -hmm. I'm from Eastern Kenya. I'm a proud car. Oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but most of all, right. I am yeah. a Kenyan. Mm -hmm. And I represent Kenyan stories. I represent African stories. Mm -hmm. And I represent represent, you know, um, stories by women, for women, and I also represent stories that I have gone through, you know, cultures that I have interacted with and stories that people have told me. So I am sort of a messenger yeah. for stories as well. Mm -hmm. So I recorded Ngewa from June last year, stuck yeah. in the middle of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and we released it about four weeks ago so yeah. Ngewa is a month it's old now. It's very new. It's very yeah. new. It's, very it's, new. It's, it's a month old now and um, Ngewa is about six, it's six, six, tracks, yeah, six tracks but it's only 15 minutes. Short yeah. and sweet and quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's how people are nowadays. My current <laughs> generation. <laughs> no pending the issue. That's We're not here too long. Yeah, that's what's yeah. up. Yeah. I know our attention so, span yeah. is just like in a lack of you know. So I made a whole EP just 15 minutes for your quick consumption. Uh, quick, 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 and yeah. you finish. Uh -huh. um, it's six tracks. It's mm. drum music, or you could say percussion music. Um, as if anyone's watching and they don't know what percussion is. So percussion is anything that you can hit mm. or strike or rattle or shake yeah. to produce a sound, yeah. like a drum, yeah. a whistle. Do, do shakes count? A shakers. Oh, shakers, yeah. yeah those a clap. Oh. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, that's yes. percussion. <laughs> all of that is percussion. <laughs> yeah. And you'll find all that plus so many more elements mm -hmm. in Gewa. Gewa. This is perfect. How much is it going for and where is it available? 
Salah is so sure. So you can find Gawa on all streaming platforms, whatever you use iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, mm. Bonplay. Um, it's on YouTube as well, and yeah. there's a fire, fire video for Hakukole, which, yeah, is, love which, is, which, is, which is a performance you video. You should see her, you should see her <laughs> in her element. I'm telling you guys, yeah. yeah. And um, if anybody wants a physical copy, I mean, I'm not very big in like yeah. physical copies some people because want that. some people yeah. just love that. Touch. I know it's, they, it's they, I, I yeah. prefer that because it's More very, yeah. it's very personal. Personal. Yeah. If anybody wants a copy, you can just hit me up on my IG. Uh, That's wait, Kasiva yeah. Let's Mutua. Let's your socials everywhere. Yeah, so my socials are uh, Kasiva Mutua mm. on IG, Facebook, Twitter, yeah. um, everywhere. TikTok. Uh, I'm, actually I'm, I'm actually not on TikTok. <laughs> I not find, yet. I, not yeah, yet. Not I yet. find TikTok <laughs> to be very noisy. And I... <laughs> Oh, you're a quiet person. Um, you love I'm, listening. You know, I spend my life yeah. playing, and and this is a lot of noise. Yeah, it's a I lot know. of sound. I know, so I, know, I, know, I, know, I, know. I prefer a little bit of rest when I'm by myself. But if anybody wants a physical copy of Ngewa, just hit me up on my socials, and I'll get it to you. Oh, amazing. even in the diaspora, like we've already sent like some copies oh, out. That's so, really amazing, yeah. and it's different. It's not something that every every many people are doing, and we love different. I would have asked about the story about the. <laughs> I'm sick being in the head, but we don't have a lot of, a lot of time. So maybe in just 10 seconds you can tell us about that because we want you to perform for us again. Cool. Were they just, uh, was it convenient? Because like, you know, I don't have a place to keep them, let them go here. Or how, how did you know? You know, actually you are the first person to actually guess this right. Oh. It was out of convenience that I lodged these sticks on my head because, oh, wow. you know, at a performance, yeah. mm -hmm. I have like so many things going on, like there's drums, there's shakers, there's cowbells, there's nini, nini, nini. And some of them usually need sticks to play. Yeah. So you know you I just lost them there and you're like, and then you know then you, you, you get them back and you continue playing. Yeah. Stuff. And then you know, guys are like <laughs> that lady with the chopstick. No? Yeah. Yeah. I almost say that. I almost say chopstick. And it works and it's very creative and different. It it's really now is. become part of you. I, it, I can't it, even it's see it. It's here. It's on the it's on the EP. It's actually it's, become my it's brand. It's a brand now. now. Yeah. And it's out of convenience. Like of Kima, convenience. that's so amazing. And thank you so I wish you had more time. I we wish. have a lot to talk about. But unfortunately we have other things to do. We still have a guest. We have guys in KC. We still need to play music. Oh, wow. So yeah, but we'd love to have you. I, I don't know, but I'm sure we'll make time <laughs> so that we can catch up from where we're still. Oh, right now but course. yeah thank you yeah. so much for coming thank too. you so much for having me all right always yeah. a pleasure anytime you want to stop by just be like yo bro i'm passing by i'm at the gate you guys <laughs> in the studio okay let's do that thing and you're always welcome you. all right so maybe you play for us one last time tell us what you're gonna play for us sure. next and then just you know draw with it i'll just compose something like off on top of my head oh what I'm feeling. Yeah, I mean, look at that let's, creativity yeah. yeah i'm feeling kind of like i don't know i'm feeling like And I'm sure if time, if time allowed it, I'll literally definitely sign up for Montra. That's amazing. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming through. Thank it's been a so pleasure much. having you on set. Thank you. All right. So we have the KC guys on standby. We're going to be coming back with them in a few. Just standby if you want to know what's happening on the ground. Right now, I'm heading over to Ken Kingsley. Afanyile Kitu.